Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And in today's video, the wheels on the battleship go round and round. One of the most common questions we've been asked ever since posting pictures of the battleship's propellers, other than uh, why are the propellers still on there, or I didn't think the propellers were still on there, we did a video about that last week, linked in the description below, was, hey, there's two different types of propellers. That's weird. Actually, all four of Battleship New Jersey's propellers are unique. She's not like your car. When we take her in for a service and an oil change, we don't rotate the propellers. Each one can only go on the hub where it is. The propellers counter-rotate, so they're, uh, when the ship is going forward, they spin towards the outside of the vessel. So the starboard ones are spinning clockwise, the port ones are spinning counterclockwise. Because of that, the blades are angled differently to cut into the water best. So you can't take one of the outboard starboard ones and put it in the outboard port position. Likewise, the outboard propellers have four blades, while the inboard propellers have five blades. This was done intentionally. Older American battleships usually had three-bladed propellers. I won't say always, but usually had three-bladed propellers. They were also painfully slow. It wasn't until the fast battleships of the uh, 1930s, the North Carolina, South Dakota, and Iowa class, that the Navy started to put propellers on ships, put them out for sea trials, and notice severe, severe vibration problems throughout uh, much of the ship. North Carolina's vibration problems were so bad that her aft fire control tower was unusable until they welded extra supports in place. Her trials were almost a year long between when the battleship was completed and the, the various times she went out, tested things, came back in, and, and they had to rotate propellers and change different uh, propeller blade arrangements to try and reduce the amount of vibrations, particularly at extreme high speed. The American fast battleships have two problems. One is the amount of power and speed that they're generating, and two is the length of the propeller shafts. Our outboard starboard shaft here runs about 350 feet forward to the forward engine room. The American fast battleships alternate engineering spaces and make them go the full length of the hull, at, not like some other battleships where you'll have an engine room, a bulkhead, and then another engine room. The U.S. Navy was worried that torpedo hits that defeat the pr torpedo protection will cause flooding that will stay on that side of the ship, which will cause tremendous listing, which will require more counter flooding, which will remove more of your reserve of buoyancy. To counter this, they left the engine rooms open for the full extent of the habitable interior volume of the ship so that you only have to counter flood the volume of the void spaces on the outside that are flooded by a torpedo hit. You don't have to counter flood to account for half of your uh, engineering spaces. It will also mean that the ship will start to go down relatively level. To accomplish this though, they have to line the engine rooms up fore to aft. On the earlier battleships, these are combined main spaces with the boilers and the engines all in one room so that there are four engineering main spaces. On the Iowa class, they break the fire rooms out from the engine rooms, so you've got fire room, engine room, fire room, engine room, alternated all the way down the length of the ship, which again means that your propeller shaft are running an extremely long distance, so there's a number of bearings and other fittings in there uh, to couple the shafts together, to transmit the, the force into the hull, to keep them from uh, twisting too much under torque, all sorts of complications. It was not until the Iowa class in 1943 or early 1944 that the Navy really got this down. With the North Carolina and South Dakota class, they, they were really changing up the propeller arrangements from ship to ship, from deployment to deployment. Even Iowa in 1943, after being commissioned, had her propellers changed out. At one point, she had some three-bladed propellers on there. And I'm not sure if that was just a test to see how the vibrations changed compared to the four and five bladed ones, or if it was related to uh, that was what they originally planned, and then by the time they got to New Jersey and the later Iowa's, they'd settled on this arrangement right here. 
Regardless, because of the different numbers of blades, you would have different surface area even though your engines are producing roughly the same power. Each one is 54,000 horsepower at full speed. So, to make the surface area relatively similar between the four-bladed and the five-bladed propellers, the four-bladed propellers have a slightly larger diameter. They're something like 18.3 uh, feet, while the inboard propellers are something like 17.1 feet in diameter. The outboard propellers generate more power, while the inboard propellers are generating more speed. The inboard propellers are also what give the Iowa-class battleships their tremendous maneuverability despite their extreme length to beam ratio. Because she has twin rudders directly behind the propellers, that's pushing a flow of water over those rudders that gives them something to bite into when they're turning. And because those propellers are mounted in skegs, it forms a tunnel between those skegs. On New Jersey, it's called the Holland Tunnel, the tunnel that has the most traffic of any tunnel in New Jersey. So all of the water that those inboard propellers are sucking in is drawn down the Holland Tunnel, and that creates a great hydrodynamic effect as it comes down that tunnel through the propellers and then over the rudders. So that allows the ships to have very tight tactical diameter, something like 920 yards, less than a Fletcher-class destroyer. And that's at 30 knots. It's uh, significantly less at lower speeds. A final thing you'll notice about the propellers is now that we've pressure washed them, you can see that they're not covered in mud, they're painted. You wouldn't do that with an active ship where those propellers are spinning, but for a ship that's going into the reserve fleet or uh, mothballs or like us, one that's going to be permanently moored as a museum, we are going to repaint the propellers like they are here, because uh, that's going to help prevent the dissimilar metal corrosion. If there's paint over the propellers and paint over the ship, we're not going to see any corrosion. If you want to see the ship's propellers for yourself, make sure you get tickets for dry dock tours. There's a link in the description below, or go to battleshipnewjersey.org. These tours will be your only chance to get down in the dry dock and see Battleship New Jersey out of the water. Possibly your only chance to see an Iowa-class battleship out of the water, at least in the near future. So, what do you like to refer to the propellers on a ship on? Propellers, props, wheels, screws, something else? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the ongoing restoration efforts of the Battleship New Jersey. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.